you say it, okay? What's up, gamers? It's your boy Taters to Poe. Back for episode 5 of Potatoes to POH on AFK TV. You may have noticed I've been gone for a few weeks. Well, I did end up securing a bond, but I was having a lot of issues with my laptop. I had to factory reset it, so I lost a bunch of captures because I forgot to just back them up or something. Um, I wrote the script about four different times, and I just couldn't get it to feel right. And then, when I finally did get the script right, I couldn't get my microphone from my headset to pick up. It was only doing the laptop microphone, so it was just full of fan noise and stuff. Just like you can hear now, but, you know, what are you going to do? So I just said, fuck it! Fuck it! We'll do it live! Do it live! Fuck it! We will leave you with a... I, I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll... No. we'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Right. Fucking thing sucks! In five, four, three. So, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna get back in gear, and I'm gonna show you my new and improved farm route live. So, here we go. We are wearing the Magic Secateurs, which, if you are done farming for the day, I would store these, as well as your Dibber and your Spade. In the leprechaun i've got a entrana safe outfit as well as a skills necklace which allows me to teleport to the fishing guild which is close to arduin the woodcutting guild which is an alternative to xerox glade and the farming guild directly and i've got the ring of wealth for a grand exchange teleport if necessary and the chronicle to teleport me to the champions guild which i'll be doing first got renar seeds snape grass seeds Yenilian seeds, and volcanic ash for making ultra compost, noted baskets of tomatoes, coins for payments, my tools, and law and dust runes for teleporting to home, and Camelot, and this also gives you like Lumbridge if you want to check your tree there and stuff. Anyway, let's get to it. I've got a chart here. You can screenshot this or download it via the link below. I also have a text version which should copy and paste very nicely and fit into your Runelight Note app. Okay, so let's start our run, shall we? Now, I'll come over here and I'll do a drive-by picking of these berries, but I don't want to keep them in my inventory, so the next place we go to, I'll be banking these. The thing is, we need 15 slots, which is exactly how many are you can see open right now. Also, I have the optional teleports to say the Fishing Guild, Woodcutting Guild, and Farming Guild, and GE on me. But I will be using my player-owned house on my main account to show you the alternatives. So here we go, you spam click it a little bit and it kind of gets a double harvest thing going on. The devs have said in previous Q&A streams that this is a feature, not a bug, so it's all gravy. Alrighty, Ultra Compost it. We're going to exchange our bucket and come over here to Vasquen. Okay, say yes, pay it tomatoes. He says cool. Alright, now we're going to go to... The Nightmare Zone, when you go to, here's how you get to it, watch, okay, so if we're in our inventory, we go to this grouping tab, and then the top right option, Nightmare Zone should be the bottom option before you scroll, and then once you've selected it once during a login, it'll stay there for future trips. Nope, we don't want to do that one, watch, check us out. That's way better, see, if you get a little space, you can do your cow animation. Do a little matador stare down here, right? And then he's like, haha, I gotcha! Funny, right? Let's head over here. You should be able to click this all the way from where you stand, but obviously it took me an extra click or two because I suck. We might run out of Unillion hops. We might need to go get some more. Luckily, they're cheap. Alrighty, here we go. Harvest these suckers. Let's spam click it. It's not doing this uh, double harvest. There we go. 
Now I usually I usually pre-click my seed because you want to pick and plant. As soon as the plant is done yielding, you want to oops, I fucked up, but you want to immediately put the seed into the ground with the dibber. If you don't, you might allow we uh, you might allow weeds to grow. So you want to do that as quick as possible. Then you can come over here. Okay, we're gonna pay the girl. Boom. Now we got. I'm gonna go to the bank here and drop off these little white berries. They're kind of useless right now. And uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna need some more spots in my inventory. Okay. So deposit the white berries. Now we're gonna go to our house. Now on this trip, I'm not gonna. Um, teleport via the house, but I am going to use it to get a little bit of run energy, because I am a little bit low. Boom. Okay, so I'm going to head to the Falador patch now. You may be wondering, why don't I do all four hops patches in a row? Well, the Entrana hops patch is pretty close to the Falador, so I combine that trip, and same thing with the Ardy patch and the Sears hops patch, so I kind of combine that trip too. As you can see on the diagram, I go hops, hops, herblot, hops, herblot, hops, and then I do all the rest of the herblots. All right, immediately I come over here and I start picking my renars. Renars seem to give the most generous profit margin of any of the herb seeds. Okay, one renar seed is 50k right now, which is a little bit high actually. So that means that we need to harvest. Let's keep ticking. Six is just shy of profit right now. Seven is profit. And this time we got eight, so it looks like we made 11k off of that herb. All right, let's get 15 buckets. Come over here. So now, Bin is empty, we deposit all of it except for three. Check this out. Alright, you want to get a couple of uh, your yield that you're going to put in the bin right here in your inventory. Now check this out. Um, I'm going to remove the status bar so they get out of the way because they're, they're really obnoxious. Status, status bars. Alright, now, watch this. Alright, now if you do it right, you got to click this, this and this. On, on the same tick. Boom. Boom. How about that? I'm harvesting the plant and dumping it into the bin at the same time. You got to do that very precisely. It's it's harvest, yield, bin. Harvest, yield, bin. You got to click all three in the same tick. There's a lot of ways to do it wrong. Sometimes you'll kind of do it, but you'll just be putting it in the bin. Sometimes you'll be harvesting, but not putting it in the bin. Now it's full. Okay, so now we come over here. Spam click, spam click. Alright, we plant. Except for it used it on the fucking Elistan for some reason. Alright. Boom, boom. Come over here, harvest this. Okay. Boom, boom. Alrighty. Gonna head on over to Entrana. Boom, boom, boom. You know what I'm talking about. Spam click that son of a bitch. Preemptively click your seeds. I am definitely gonna need more seeds. Pop them bitches in. Ultra compost. Note. D litter. Pay hey Francis. One. Nice. We're done. All right. Now we go to. I am gonna go to the GE real quick, but I'm actually going to use my POH to do that. Okay. Here we go. View house. Now I'm gonna have to use tank hero. Okay. Re up. on down to G town okay or not well that's enough for now okay 
Back home. Okay. Here's a trick. Check it out, guys. We're gonna go to settings. House options. And teleport inside is set to off. This means that when you teleport to the house portal, you automatically teleport outside. Here's another trick. Go to menu entry swapper. Okay, in object swaps, come on down to house advertisement and view last. Now, once you've been inside of the house for the first time, now it's just a left click for the birdhouse. So now we teleport directly outside and click the birdhouse on a one click. That makes it much, much quicker to get inside. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now we're gonna come over here and use the fishing guild teleport to get toward Arduin. Ardoyan, Ardujne, Ardoin, however the fuck you pronounce it. Thanks Jagex for making the most confusing fantasy names for the most popular towns in the game. All right. Look at that yield, look at that go, look at it go, look at that, look at that. Boom, add the ash to it, then withdraw it. Okay, uh, so let's try that trick again. Let's get one or two in this inventory. Okay, boopity boop. Maybe I can kind of come over here. Alright, dude, dude, dude. Nope, fix. I messed it up. Try it again. See, it's harvesting, but it's not putting it in. Alright. Doop, doop, doop. There you go. It's, it's hard. Anyway. Damn, that yield was crazy. Okay, boom, boom, compost it. Boom, boom, give me, take the buckets and give me one more because I'm going to run up to the Sears patch now. Now, we could run or we can just teleport over to Catherbealot. Catherbealot. Oh no, dead herbs. That's not good. Alright, come over here. Add the volcanic ash to the bin before you take out the buckets. If you take out the buckets of super compost and then try and add it to this, it's two per bucket. So 15 buckets would equal 30 ash. But if you add it to the bin prior, it uses only 25. You save five volcanic ash this way. Boop, boop, boop. That's how you gotta do it. You gotta do the harvest and then the doo-doo really quick. Coming up on 73 farming. Uh, I think once we get 74, that'll be a little more interesting because then I'll have some tide farm content to show you guys instead of just this over and over and over. But I want to show you my new farming route. That is kind of important. We're going to get to Mauritania in an interesting way, so check it out. Now, most people would try and use an ectophile or a fairy ring. Um, the ectophile wastes an inventory slot and when we need exactly 15, and that's exactly how many we have spare generally um, for ultra compost harvesting. And then um, the fairy ring is kind of a noob move because you generally uh, get attacked by a vampire and their wander range is so extreme that they will follow you to the patch and piss off your other farmers. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use a Fankin's Castle teleport. Now you don't need to do the Fankin's Castle quest to be able to get here. And it is pretty much as close as the Fairy Ring. Definitely closer than the Ectophile. And uh, less dangerous than the Fairy Ring because you don't get followed by vampires. As long as there's not already one here. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Herbs first. I do herbs first because they take the longest to grow and um, while we're here harvesting the other stuff, they may already have grown a cycle or two while we have been harvesting our other stuff. So now we're going to grab 15 buckets, process our compost over here, oops, keep pressing the wrong stuff. Okay, open it up, add your 25 ash to the bin, saving 5 ash this way, start getting the compost. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Boom, boom. And this one's harvesting like crazy. All right. Uh, now we're going to head to 
Xerix Blade, which we could use a Woodcutting Guild Teleport, but we're going to use a House Teleport, Xerix. Let's go. Reju. Xerix Talisman. Option 2. Okay, come on over here. Come on, plant the fucking seed, damn it! Okay, here's, here's kind of funny watch you can collect from the back end of this. Just a silly thing. By the way, we don't need to ever pick our white lilies. They are a full-time protection plant. As soon as they're grown, they protect all of our allotments. Not our herbs, but our allotments are safe. Okay, so now we're going to teleport to my house. Farming guild. Good yield. You may be wondering, why am I not using the bottomless compost bucket? Well... One, it's a little bit expensive, but that's not the primary reason. Since I am intentionally doing Ultra Compost for money-making, um, the bottomless compost bucket is a bad option. Because you can put up to 10,000 charges worth of Ultra Compost in it, and it doubles whatever you put in. So it actually is like put in 5,000 Ultra Compost and it turns to 10,000. But you cannot take the Ultra Compost out without deleting it. So in the event you want to sell extra ultra compost that you have, or you want to sell the bucket, you have to delete the ultra compost that's in it. I actually tweeted Mod Ash and politely asked him if he could consider a change to where we could take the ultra compost out and put it into empty buckets for selling. He said, sounds good to me, but for now, we have to do it like this with normal buckets. Now, you could put, say, 100 Ultra compost in the bottomless bucket at a time and use it for composting your pots but not for taking it out of the bins because we're using this as our profit you know so that's an option but then you'd have to carry both bucket types at the same time it's just a little bit more of a hassle although it could save you some money by doing the double feature over time under click under yourself to stop harvesting boop boop should be it boom You're pretty good at that. Alright, so now we're done with all our normal herb allotments and hops, so we're going to do our auxiliary plants that make money real quick. Primarily these bushes. Look at that yield, baby. They're not worth a whole lot. Only 300 or so each. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, these aren't worth as much as the cactus seeds. They do add up, but the normal cactus spines are worth, like, over a thousand each or something. Okay. Dig that bitch up. Put new bitch in that. I don't know if I don't know if they're affected yield wise by ultra compost, but I always do it anyways. Now let's go to the house portal. There's a bush patch just outside the house here. Do a little drive-by picking. Alright, now I'm going to pop right out back outside and use this boat to Arduin. Now this is kind of a funky way to get here, because I don't have the arty cape. But I'm trying to get to that bush patch over here by the monastery. There are other ways to get here, this just seems to work out pretty well since I'm already there by the house portal. A lot of people don't even know about that boat right there. Because it's like just out of render distance if you've ever been to the Remington House Portal. So you won't normally see it. Boom, boom. Okay, now, uh, honestly, I'm just going to go lazy way. Yeah, like I could have teleported to the duel arena. It's all good. Six of one, half dozen the other kind of shit, you know? 
Boom. Compost it. Okay, that's it. That's our profit run. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Okay, we use six of these. Equaling 300,000. And we got back 350,000. So we made 50k on our herbs, even though one died. So we probably would have made um, a lot more. A lot more if, if that one hadn't died. We got a whole bunch of snake grass, equaling 81k. Um, okay, and then a bunch of Ganillion hops. So let's take this away. Let's do remove all this except for 50k worth. Because that's how much of this we made profit, which would be like, what, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so we made, yeah, let's do 7. Alright, so that's that. Uh, we had some potato cactuses in there. White berries, 105. Uh, now, we ended up using a bunch of these, so it ends up being more like 90 or something like that. We ended up getting 90 of these as, as pure profit. And uh, there, there you have it. So this is how many herbs we got. We got uh, 45. Because we lost the plant, only 7 of them ended up being profit. The rest will be sold back for more seeds. And here is our profit from this yield. It could have been between 50 and 100k more if we didn't lose the one herb. But that's okay. Yeah, so you can expect to make about three to 400k per hour at a mid-level farming with all of these particular crops. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Tune in next time. I plan to do some tide farming soon after I level up a little bit more and get my seven next box. Six, so Thanks so much six, for watching. No. Seven, six, so here we go. Taters to po, taters to po. Lots of potatoes, it's taters we grow. Taters to po, taters to po. Lots of potatoes, it's taters to po.